Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at Hanamule watercolor paper. I have heard a lot about this company throughout uh, the artists of YouTube and Instagram and most recently I had a discussion about it with one of the viewers about their eco-friendly bamboo mixed media paper option after my vegan watercolor paint guide was released. I contacted the company to see if they had any paper samples available and they did not. However, they were interested in collaborating with my channel so that I could go ahead take a look at these papers and let you all know what I thought about them. Although they provided a beautiful assortment of papers for me to try out for this video, this video is not sponsored and all of the thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. After a couple of emails, they agreed to send me four different types of paper to try out. Three are in block forms, and then the fourth one is a sample that they didn't have any more of the blocks available to send. But we're gonna start off taking a look at the Cezanne watercolor paper, which is going to be our typical 140 pound cold press paper. This is what most of us are probably used to working with and most comparable to the Arches paper that I use most often. It is a mold made watercolor paper and the surface of the paper is sized. This paper is also age resistant and of a natural white color. The next line that we have here is the Turner watercolor paper named after William Turner, which is the same namesake as the Turner watercolor paints. It is the same as the Cezanne paper in every way, except for the fact that the surface of this paper is not sized. Both of these blocks have 10 sheets of paper in them and they are adhered on all four sides with the most rigid binding that I have ever seen in any block. This stuff is super, super thick and rigid. It covers four of the sides of the pages and leave the corners open for you to insert a palette knife into. I have this footage in real time so you can see kind of how slow and careful and methodical I have to be with this palette knife in order to not uh, accidentally slip and slice my finger, which I did do once, but uh, luckily it wasn't too bad. The binding on the edges does stick to the edges of the paper, but if you are used to using the 9 by 12 inch blocks, you do have that extra uh, 0.4 and 0.6 inches on the edges of these paper to trim down your paper to be smaller once you cut them off of your block. The final block that they sent me is the one I originally wrote about. This is the bamboo mixed media paper. It is 90% bamboo fiber and 10% cotton rag. It is suitable for watercolor, acrylic, and pastel according to the cover here. And instead of being 140 pound, it is 125 pound and it comes with 25 sheets rather than 10. This block is bound differently than the other ones are. They have two sides. The short edges are adhered with a more uh, typical, I think, type of adhesive that is much easier to cut away. And here I am just sliding in the palette knife and you can see how easily I can detach this from the block. The final type of paper that they sent over was the sample sheets that I mentioned since they didn't have a full pad of it ready to go. But this is the Hanamule 300. And this one had less information on the page available, but after talking with them through email, I did find out that this is also 100% cotton and it is almost exactly like the Turner watercolor paper, except the surface of it is much more smooth. I am going to be showing you demonstrational paintings on each of these four types of paper in this video, but first I just wanted to show you the side-by-side -side comparison of each of the different swatches that I did on this paper to kind of uh, just preliminarily demonstrate the different surfaces we have here. I'm actually going to be starting on the right hand side here with the Cezanne watercolor paper since this is the 140 pound cold press. This again, as I mentioned, is going to be the most standard paper that most of you are probably used to seeing in your own practices. It has the most vibrancy since the paper is sized and the pigment is going to sit right on top of the paper for you. Next to the Cezanne, we have the Turner watercolor paper that is also 140 pound cold press, but this one does not have sizing. Now, when I was first trying out these papers, I did go to Instagram and asked for some feedback on the differences between sized versus unsized paper, since the paints reacted very strangely, at least in my experience, to this paper. The difference between sized and unsized paper, as many people wrote me back and let me know, is that the unsized paper is going to allow the pigments to really settle in and and sit into the papers, um, which means that they're going to appear less vibrant since more of the pigment is being absorbed into the paper. You can see that a second layer doesn't really add much depth at all, and there's also this really fine speckled texture that I saw once before with the Strathmore 500 paper, and I didn't know that at the time that that paper was, had less sizing on it, and I didn't like how it handled when I actually painted with it. 
I did hear from several people that this is better suited for some perhaps traditional Eastern watercolor painting styles and paints. And so later on in this demonstration, you will see me using my Gonsai Tambi paints rather than my Western watercolors to try out the surface. And I can say that I do like this paper a little bit better with those paints. The last two I'm not going to spend too much time on since I'll have more time to talk about them during the demonstrations, but you've got the Bamboo Mixed Media, which is close to the Cezanne in terms of the vibrancy of the colors and how they glaze. And then once again, coming back around to the Hanamule 300, which is more similar to the Turner. It does seem to glaze a little bit better than the Turner does, but again, we'll see that in practice in just a little bit. Moving on to the demonstrations here, I picked four different animals to do on each of the four different types of paper. Rather than doing a side-by-side -side comparison of each one, since these papers are so different from one another, I wanted to go ahead and pick animals that I thought that the style that I would paint them in would suit the papers best. So here I'm starting off with the Cezanne 140 pound cold pressed sized watercolor paper and we are painting a seahorse, which is a subject that I would typically paint and I'm using a style that I would typically paint in. I also use this paper to paint the peacock in the White Knights review that I know many of you have already seen. And uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll go ahead and put a link up in the upper corner so that you can go ahead and check out yet another painting on this paper. In general, I love the way this paper handles and it might be a little bit too soon to say, but I think it might even rival out arches for my favorite type of watercolor paper to paint on on a regular basis. This paper from Hanamule does flow a bit more than some of the other cotton papers that I have used, but I actually like that about it in that you have a little bit more of this loose, free watercolor style. The second painting demonstration that I have for you is the Turner watercolor paper. So again, this is the unsized watercolor paper and without that sizing, the pigments are really going to seep into the paper and spread out a lot more than they would on the sized paper. I use the Kuretake Gonzai Tombi paints uh, at the recommendation of my followers on Instagram. So thank you again so much for that help. And I've tried to paint a seagull. My intent was it for it to be quite a bit looser than it turned out to be, but it is my painting after all. So so that can probably be expected. I still don't think this is my type of paper, but uh, I do think that if you like really loose, free, abstract types of paintings, the way that the paints flow on this paper actually remind me a lot of Angela Fair's work, um, then I think this could be a really, really beautiful paper for you to be using. Next up we have the Bamboo Mixed Media Paper and I really enjoyed working on this. The texture is very flat compared to the other ones, similar to the type of texture that maybe a Canson XL would have, but this is a huge step up from that paper in my opinion. I really love that it is made from 90% bamboo, which is a renewable resource. Um, so that is really great in terms of sustainability as cotton isn't that great for the environment. Although it does have that 10% cotton rag to give you a little boost up with some traction in your paper. 
You'll see here that the glazes on the squid that I'm painting are pretty flat in and of themselves, but it takes layers really, really well. I can't really speak to the mixed media aspect of this paper since I am primarily a watercolor artist and the most mixed media that I ever do really is some light ink towards the end of the paintings, but I would imagine with the very slight tooth that this paper has along with how smooth it is would make it really ideal for a lot of different types of mediums. I was able to take a small fine tipped brush and do a little bit of line art around the edges of the squid here and I really really enjoyed that process I don't often use a lot of line art in my paintings but it is something that I want to get more comfortable with and I think this paper is a great place to start for me using those techniques Last up, we have the Hanamule 300, and this is a paper that was quite perplexing to me as I couldn't really find online how it was different from the other papers, but after emailing their correspondent that I have from the company, she explained to me that this paper is very similar to the Turner watercolor paper, except for the paper is much more smooth. So this paper is not sized, and she quoted it as being a true European watercolor paper. Now, I did have a little bit of confusion in terms of which side of the paper I was supposed to use. I've had this happen with other samples that I have received where the area that they leave for you to paint actually feels like the back of the paper. So when I started this demonstration, I wanted to go ahead and use what I thought was the front side of the paper. And so I didn't use the space that they had left for me on the opposite side. I used the back side instead between the text that they had written. However, upon starting painting, I realized very quickly that something felt a little bit off. As I mentioned, this paper is not sized, so this might be the way this paper is intended to handle. I really don't know since I don't use unsized paper very often, but the texture of it was really, really strange. And there was a lot of, it wasn't quite pilling, but it was a similar effect where there seemed to be fibers of the paper that kind of showed up, kind of like when I've used Arches hot press paper. It did fade a little bit as the paper dried, but it still remained kind of a strange texture in the way that the washes dried. So instead of leaving things out as is, I did flip over another sheet of paper and painted on where they had left me area to paint, which felt like the backside of the paper. It was much smoother and the washes went on really, really beautifully. So I don't know in a block which side of the paper would be face up, but my preference on this particular type of paper is actually to use the backside where I felt I had more control over my washes. Things were a little bit more smooth, but it ultimately is going to depend on your painting style. So kind of to wrap things up here, I absolutely love the Cezanne and the Bamboo Mixed Media papers, and I will eagerly be using them in more paintings in the future. I don't know if I'm ever going to be the type of artist who likes to use unsized paper, but maybe it will be good to have these on hand to try and loosen up my style just a little bit more. If you've used Hanamula papers, let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite and why, and I would love to hear your different opinions. They do have other papers besides the ones that were featured in this video, and you can find all of them at their website, which I will link in the description below, as well as some Amazon affiliate links to find them easily here in the U.S. Their papers are much more expensive here in the US than some of the competitors, but I have heard from European viewers that it is quite affordable in other locations around the world, so hopefully you can get a hold of this paper if it is something you are interested in trying. You may have noticed that all the animals I painted in today's video were from Oceans and Coasts, and that is our theme for this month's Animal Artist Collective, which will be going up next week on March 8th. I had a really hard time deciding which animal I wanted to choose, so these were some of my runner-ups that uh, didn't get selected for my main video, but if you would like to participate unofficially in the Animal Artist Collective and paint your own ocean or coastal animal, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter for more information, and we would love to see what you come up with. Before I go, I do want to thank Hannah Mule one more time for sending over all these papers for me to try out and to share with all of you. I want to thank all of you for liking this video if you enjoyed this content, for commenting, to help this video gain exposure and for subscribing if you would like to see more. And of course, as always, I want to thank my patrons who help keep this channel afloat. Have a wonderful couple of days and I will see you in the next video.